Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Thursday the 21st of July 2022. Thanks for joining me. The date strikes me as significant. So two and one is three, that's about communication and new beginnings. Seven is the mind and creativity. So I think in that regard you're going to find it easy to express yourself. 2022 is six, that's a temporary opportunity. That's a kind of window of opportunity opening up for you to create something. And 22 is the master number of the builder. So you can do something that's really long-term and significant. So if I add them all up, we've got three and seven, that's um, 10, and then six is 16, one and six is seven, and seven again is the mind and creativity. So if you're a writer or an artist or a performer or something like that, I feel that this is a day where you'll feel super grounded and able to express yourself nicely. So I used this deck, the Tower of the Witches, a week or two ago, and I've been thinking about them a lot since then, actually. I think the the thing about this deck is the really strong personalities that are depicted. I really like that. Like, there's so much character in each one of these faces. They're not just these blank stock images. Okay, so let's have a look at what the cards want you to know then. I'm going to choose three cards here. Let's have a little look. All right, so the first card is the Hermit. My numbers are three, six, nine, always have been. So the Hermit is... um someone I can relate to on a vibrational level, but also on a practical level. Then we've got Karma, this is the Judgment card. And finally, we've got the Sun. Okay, so the thing that's kind of interesting here is this Eclipse and the Sun and the Light. So um, I was talking to someone about this in a personal reading yesterday, actually. We've got solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, right? And the, the moon is what you feel and what's happening internally, so your heart. And the sun is about what you're thinking. It's what, a, what you're striving towards. It's your identity. And during an eclipse, the sun and the moon are blacked out. So whether it's a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse, I'm going to choose to think of this as a... Um, solar Eclipse, because the 20th card in the Major Arcana, the Judgment card, is very much about waking up to your real purpose. So when either of these luminaries, the Moon or the Sun, they're, they're blacked out, it kind of allows you to step back from those influences a little bit and to say, okay, what is my identity really? What is it that I'm striving towards? So rather than being on the journey, let me actually look at the journey. That's where the Solar Eclipse and with the lunar eclipse, it kind of gives you freedom from your own feelings, from your own patterns of behavior. So again, you, you can step back from them and you can reevaluate what you're doing and what your part in the situation really is. So the sun card is about the solar plexus chakra, the sun, getting in touch with your inner child and finding some sort of momentum in life to journey towards your own happy place. A solar eclipse is that um, moment that says, okay, how do I stand in my own way here? How do I sabotage myself? And particularly, that behavior, how does that prevent me from becoming the person I've always wanted to be? And with the 20th card in the major arcana here, karma or judgment, it's usually an angel blowing a trumpet and these corpses rising out of their coffins. So it's kind of like your higher self prompting you to step into your real life and to live the kind of life that you were meant to experience uh, and to leave behind things that have brainwashed you on planet Earth. So, you know, you come from a certain place, therefore you can and can't do this, or your gender determines what you're gonna be. And all of that stuff is nonsense according to the judgment card. Listening to your higher self, that's gonna give you good advice and will empower you to say, this is the life I've been given I'm going to ignore all that noise and I'm going to do exactly what it is that I want and the things that make me happy. So he looks super innocent, but it's kind of it looks of deceiving because he, the sun card, there's so much power and strength in getting in touch with your inner child. It allows you to 
put boundaries in place. It allows you to really be determined and to say, this is what I want to achieve for myself. So it's um, power through authenticity and power through making yourself happy. Karma is about what you put out, you get back. And in this case, so let's see, why is this called karma? If we're, look, we've got this magic ritual. I'm just thinking out loud here as I'm reading this card. So we've got, this is the Tower of the Witches. So we've got these people in some sort of ceremony and there's an eclipse happening and they're kind of um, deferring to this natural phenomena and they're saying, okay, this is a, a moment where we can really affect change, hence the ritual. Let's draw the power of this event to possibly change our karma. So it's about... Again, like if you feel like, oh, I must have created some bad karma for myself to experience all these things or vice versa. I must have done something really fabulous in a former life because I'm just having such a, an amazing experience. Then this is the power that's required to shift your own karma. So it's a it's a powerful opportunity to change the course of your life and your destiny by taking a moment to say, OK, let's step back and let's look at what is available and let's make a change so that things in future can be different. So it's a do over, it's starting again. It's saying, let's leave the past and, and um, complete it. Let's leave it behind and let's build some new karma in future. And the sense here is that to do that kind of thing, to break out of this pre-ordained path through life, <clears throat> you need some sort of a strength. You need some sort of a wake up call or some sort of special event to shift gears, to, to, to liberate yourself from that kind of thing that's been prescribed. And that's what this card gives you. So whether it's an angel saying, hey, wake up to your true self, or whether it's some sort of natural event that says you can tap into this and change your experience on this planet, either way, the power is available to you. So the hermit is about looking within and trying to find answers and the meaning of what your experience is all about. It's basically being by yourself, honoring yourself. So he's not at a party, right? He's standing in this frozen wasteland. And he said, I wanna be here because I need some peace and quiet and solitude in order to shine this light to understand who I am. And I can't do that when I'm distracted by a bunch of other people. I've gotta have a word with myself. He's covered in stars here. I've gotta have a word with the universe and try and light that up so I can understand it. So it's saying that by connecting with your higher self, your guides, your angels, the universe, God, whatever you want to call that power source, and saying, okay, what is it that you want me to be aware of? So I'm taking my lantern and I'm trying to illuminate this situation. The message is that by following that process, you will get the answers that you need and you will understand your role in things what you put out and then what you get back. So the karma that you create for yourself, you start to get that. It clicks into place and you're like, okay, this is why certain things happen. So for instance, why am I always in relationships with people who disrespect me and who dismiss my feelings? Is that just a coincidence or is there something I'm doing to um, attract that? And I don't think that's uh, victim shaming. It can be the same thing. Why is it that I'm so lucky? I barely lift a finger and everything seems to work out for me. Looking at that, what you put into every situation, there's, I'm saying that it isn't just a coincidence. I'm saying that we give out certain energy and that as a result of that, we get something in return. The hermit is able to understand these almost invisible patterns by saying, okay, I'm going to take a moment to contemplate and to try and get it. That's what the hermit does for you. So if you don't understand your life, why it is the way it is, why you particularly have all these repetitions and things coming up in over and over and over again. The Hermit card says that you can shine a light on that and get very, very clear on these patterns. The Karma card then, the Judgment card, gives you the ability to change your behavior, to say, okay, I understand it now, I see it for what it is, and I have the confidence and the ability to break out of that routine and to start operating in a different way that's totally unfamiliar to me. But I'm going to take a risk because I want things to change. So I'm going to take a moment to integrate these answers that I've received via my higher self. And then I'm going to take practical action to operate differently. 
And the Sun card, being able to get in touch with your inner child, it means that this whole process is successful. The understanding and then the ability to do something about it removes all this brainwashing and all these obstacles so that your inner five-year-old is revealed again, that part of you that always is unblemished and happy and enjoys the process of life regardless of your experiences. So, you know, people often say, well, I'm just a product of my upbringing or my life has made me who I am. Well, that may be very well and true, but on days like these, you can put those experiences in a drawer, so you're not forgetting about them, you've learned about them, you've integrate them, integrated them, but you're now saying, do you know what? Actually, I have a better version of myself in mind. I've got no experience in life that would validate me being this person, but I'm now going to try and define life myself rather than have life define me. So you may think I'm splitting hairs with that, but really to me, it's about, I'm going to make my mark on the world. I'm not going to let the world mark me. And that's the, um, the interesting thing about the Sun card, that he seems so, you know, non-threatening and just a kid having a, 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 a ride in the sunflower field here. But this is really the core of our power, to remember that we are spiritual beings who are able to make an impression on the world and that we don't really need to let the world touch us. On a spiritual level, there's a part of you that is going to be completely untouched by your experience on planet Earth. It does, you don't have full access to it. It resides in the palm of the creator of the higher power. And, you know, a lot of us spend a lot of time trying to understand ourselves and to try and get to that hidden place. If you can barely get there, how can other people touch that part of you? Unless you give them permission, unless you say, okay, what you did to me defines me. And again, I know that's easily said, if you've had something dreadful happen, of course, that's going to influence you and affect you as a person. But what I'm saying is, on a spiritual level, there's a part of you which is completely immune to anything or anyone that comes across your path. And you're able to get back to that place so the hermit, by shining the light, is able to take 80 years off his age and get back to this inner child that he's always wanted to be. And the day allows you to tap into that power to wind back time. Then let's say you are in this spot and you say, okay, this is my life as it's, as it's been so far. I'm going to start again and create new memories and new experiences that then determine and cement this happy person, this empowered individual that I always have felt I am and that I want to continue to be. So it's about turning things upside down and saying, I'm the boss, the world isn't. Number wise, we've got nine and 20 is 29. And what's this, 19? Is that 48? 19 and 20 is 29, yep. <laughs> no. 19, oh yeah, yeah. 19 and 20 is 39, thank you. And then nine is 48, yes. 48, um, eight and four is 12, one and two is three, and three is about communication and new beginnings. So have a word with yourself and start along the path that you wanna walk, not the one that you feel has been laid out for you and that you have to walk. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to please your boss or your parents or um, your children or the world and you may say well actually Greg I do I have a boss and I have to keep him happy um, otherwise I'm not gonna have a job anymore yes that's true but there are other bosses in the world who you may get on with better so it, it it means that yes it can be uncomfortable there can be major changes you have to undertake but ultimately the cards are saying no matter how difficult you do always have a choice to be this Okay, so a big day, major opportunities for personal rediscovery, not even personal growth, but unearthing this hidden you that's now got all gre greased up and dirtied up with the experiences of the world, you can kind of clean him or her off and dust them off and put them back at the center of your life. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website, it's gregoryscott.com. 
on the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe and the little bell next to it and share the video online. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.